you're with us today. I just want to say thank you very much for being a part of our Bible study for this week. Uh, I'm excited about what God is doing for us and through us. This is a great year, and God has been uh, really, really good to us so far, and I want to encourage you, uh, brothers and sisters, to realize that the Lord is good, and he is worthy uh, to be praised, and we must trust to God at this particular time in history, no matter what chaos or confusion that we may be experiencing in the world, we must understand that God is still in charge. God still has the ability to help us through the circumstances, the trials, the difficulties that we face, but we must be willing to trust God and see that it is God who's the one who's helping us. It's God is the one who's going to uh, take care of us. But I want to uh, encourage you to uh, turn your Bibles to Becca chapter number three, and of course, uh, we've uh, been studying Abeka for about two months now, and I want you to understand there's great word there in Abeka, uh, chapter number three. And of course, we see here in the third chapter of Abeka that there's a prayer. Of course, we know uh, Abeka has been really having a conversation with God, a very candid conversation with God. And of course, God has been answering him. Then God may have not responded specifically the way Rebecca wanted him to respond, but one thing we do know is that God did respond to him. But let us hear uh, the word of God from the New Living Translation of uh, God's word in Rebecca chapter number three, uh, verses one through five. Habakkuk three, a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on Shagoyanoth. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day, in our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and his praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise, rays flashed from his hand where his power was hidden. So as we see the scripture there, as it was read by uh, the uh, online Bible system. And I encourage you, if you don't have a system where you can, you know, have the uh, word of God where you can hear it uh, night and day and you can meditate it on it night and day, I want to encourage you to do that. And the reason I use this as an example is because we need to have the word of God that where we can meditate on it because we need the word to meditate on the word in order for us to be successful at what we have been called to do, because uh, so many times we find ourselves in situations where the word of God is nowhere to be found. It's in our house, but we don't open our Bible. So I want to encourage you to really focus on finding a way to hear the word of God so that it becomes uh, the, uh, the key in the guiding uh, principles of your life are taken there from the Bible. But here in Habakkuk, chapter number three, Habakkuk, uh, of course, is the prophet, and uh, on Shukanu, uh, basically, what we must understand is when they talk about uh, this particular term of uh, Shukanu, we must understand that they're referring to a type of a music. Uh, it was song in a spirit of victory and excitement. Uh, Habakkuk uh, finds himself where he knows that God has responded to him. He knows that God has uh, moved forward with his plans for uh, the children of Israel at that particular point. He knew that the Babylonians were going to come in and take them into exile for uh, 70 plus years. And what I want to encourage you to know is that even in the middle of the situation that you find yourself in, and it seems as if God is not listening, uh, and it seems as if you have been praying and you've been praying and you've been praying and it seems as if God did not hear you. God was not responding. God did not know specifically who you were and he did not know your name as the songwriter says. But I'm here to say to you that God knows your name. God knows who you are and God has the ability, the distinct ability to respond at the appropriate time with his judgment on those that have been offensive uh, to him and to those who have not obeyed uh, his word, not obeyed him. So that's what I want you to understand is, is that God has a plan. 
And we can see here that we have Habakkuk who prays uh, to God and expecting, you know, God uh, has, it, expecting God to answer. And I want to ask you, uh, how uh, does it feel for you when you pray to God expecting an answer? Do you go in a mode of praise because you know that God is going to, to answer you? Uh, do you move in a mode of expectation, knowing that God has the ability and God is going to uh, take care of you uh, during this particular time or during uh, the uh, challenges that you're facing? What, what do you do? Uh, are, you, uh, are you just not in a mode of, you don't think God's going to respond? Well, I'm here to say to you that God is going to respond. I mean, uh, we... In, in situations where there's uncertainty, we must always, as believers, uh, move in a mode of expecting God to do something. And he may not do exactly what we want him to do, but we know that he is going to uh, respond uh, to us. And we can see here that in this particular passage of scripture, we can see that Rebecca is in awe. You'll see that later on, but uh, he's in fear of the Lord. Uh, and why does he fear the Lord? Because so, uh, Proverbs chapter number nine and verse number 10 says to us, Proverbs nine and verse number 10, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Wait, hear me out. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's where wisdom begins when you fear God. You have a reverent fear of God, a, a fear of knowing that God can respond in, a, uh, in the nick of time. God can respond in this very moment and help you with whatever situation or circumstance that you find yourself in. And it says, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Okay, so the Holy One, knowledge of God is where uh, understanding comes. You know, there's some people who have bad understanding. I mean, you can explain it to them uh, three or four different ways, and then they still don't get it. Uh, uh, knowledge is power. Knowledge of the Word of God is power. But there's some people who don't get it. They don't understand uh, God's word. It are there's some people who refuse to uh, understand and to focus on understanding and knowing uh, the word of God. You must have a knowledge of the word of God if we're going to be successful. We must have the knowledge of God if we're going to be successful at what God has called us uh, to do. Also in Proverbs chapter number eight, verse number 13 and verse number uh, 14, uh, it says to fear the Lord is to hate evil. You fear God, so you hate anything that is e evil. Anything that is evil, you hate it because of your fear of the Lord or because you love the Lord. Uh, it, God says here in Proverbs chapter number eight, it says to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, uh, perverse speech. Think about this now. Anybody who's prideful, anyone who's arrogant, anyone who has evil behavior, anyone who has pervert, perverse uh, speech. I'm talking about the people who want to tell these uh, inappropriate jokes, these nasty jokes. Those individuals are outside of the will of God. People who want to be arrogant, want to be puffed up in themselves. People who uh, are uh, who have all kinds of evil behavior all of the time. What they're doing is they want to do it. They want to have it their way. They're selfish. They're not thinking about uh, anyone else but themselves. Those people have a tendency to be people who God hates because they're arrogant. They're prideful. And they don't think about anyone but themselves. They're selfish. Verse number uh, 14, Proverbs 8 and 14 says, 
Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have understanding and power. I'm using the New International Version of, of the word, counsel and sound judgment are mine. If you want to have sound judgment, you want to have uh, sound counsel, how do you get that? You get that by what? Knowing the Holy One. Knowledge of the Holy One brings about understanding. Fearing God brings about wisdom. It's the beginning of wisdom. But many of us find ourselves where we don't know. We don't know God, and we don't move in a way where we're going to not be judgmental and arrogant. Proverbs chapter number 14, verse number 26, and verse number 27, he says, he who fears the Lord has a secure fortress, and for his children it shall be a refuge. There's a, there's a fortress, there's a, a secure fortress because you fear the Lord. But when you fear the Lord, there's going to be protection that's going to be around you. People who are arrogant, people who are prideful, pride becomes before pride comes before the fall. Then what I'm saying to you, you have people who are prideful, and when you're prideful, there's not going to be any security. There's not going to be any uh, security, a refuge uh, for your children. And what I'm saying to you is, is that if you're going to get where God wants you to be, you must not be prideful. You not, must not be arrogant. You must not be a person of evil behavior and a person who always has something foul coming out of your mouth. If you want to get to where God wants you to be, you have to fear God and you have to hate evil. And, you know, of course, that's going to protect your children. If you want to protect your children, you must not be a person who is evil. Because before it before uh, you know it, there's something that is happening to your children. There's some chaos, there's some confusion surrounding your children because of the arrogant behavior. Remember, our children do what we do. They follow our behavior. This says also Proverbs chapter number 14, verse number uh, 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a man from the snares of death. The fear of the Lord is the fountain of life. Turning a man from the snares. Of, if you want to have a successful life, you must fear God. And this is what Habakkuk was. He feared the Lord so that he had a conversation with God to find out why it was taking so long for God to do specifically what he knew God had the ability to do. Joshua chapter number 24 and verse number 14, it says, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your forefather, worship beyond the river, that they worship beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. What God is saying to us is that he wants us to serve him faithfully. He doesn't want you to be wishy-washy. He doesn't want you to be one day you're with God, the next day you're not with God. He doesn't want that. He wants you to be uh, committed and be faithful to him. He doesn't want you committing adultery on him. He wants you to throw away uh, the tarot cards. He wants you to throw away the horoscopes. He wants you to throw away all of those things that our foreparents used, and he wants us to serve him and to serve him only. If we want to get what God wants us to have, and we can see here in Abeka, Abeka is praying to God, asking for additional answers. Now, of course, he had conversations in uh, one in chapter one and chapter number two, but now he's saying, you know, he's praying to uh, the Lord, and he's asking you know, the Lord from saying, and he's, he's basically uh, showing specifically who God is and what God has done. Let's look at Psalms 34, uh, 11 through uh, 14. It says, come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life 
and loves length of days that he may see good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking the sea. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. That's the New American Standard Version Bible. I wanted to make sure you can understand that. It says, come children, listen to me. I will teach you to fear the Lord. Who is the man who desires life? All of us want to live. You know, during the pandemic, you know, all of us don't want to be exposed to the virus, don't want to be around anybody who had the virus, don't be, want to be in any places where they say the virus is. We want to live. And we love the length of days. We all want to live a long life. We want to live it to the max. And we try to hold on to life. Here's how you do it. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. If you want to live a long life, you got to keep your mouth closed. Keep your mouth off of people. Keep your mouth from telling lies. And you got to depart from evil and do the good things. And instead of fighting, you must pursue peace. That means you have to be actively involved in moving toward peace. And it takes something to move toward peace when there are people who have wronged you. There are people who've wronged me. There are people in Texarkana who've wronged me. There are people in the church who've wronged me, but I cannot hold that against them. I must pursue peace instead of fighting. Because if you want to fight all the time, let me tell you, you end up using words that are not healthy. And when you use words that are not healthy, basically what you're doing is, is that you're not, it, as the Bible said, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Let's look at Psalms 1, 11 and 10. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and good understanding have, uh, have all those who do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. Good understanding come from those who do his commandments. And I know everyone said, well, well, we're under grace. We're under the dispensation of grace. Yes, you are, but there's still some rules that you need to follow. There's still some things that you need to do and you need, there's still some things that God has put in place to keep you alive. You've often heard me say that if we're going to live a long life, we must understand that the Ten Commandments are designed to keep us alive. If we follow the Ten Commandments, God has the ability to keep a, and that's within his will. Now, remember, within his will, and we talked about that earlier this year, people who are within the will of God Remember, God already has things that are in store for you. God already has things that are, are prepared for you, but you must be within the will of God. Uh, Psalms 128 and 1 says, How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his way. You're going to be blessed because you fear God. Here's what I'm talking about you're going to be willing to be faithful to God. You're not going to be willing to have an affair on God. You're going to be faithful to him. You're not going to uh, commit adultery or fornication on God. What do I mean by that? I mean, you're going after worshiping other gods, the gods of this world. And that's what God wants you to understand. Something. He wants you to be in reverent fear of him. And if you walk in his ways, I'm here to say to you that you're going to be blessed. Why are you not blessed? Maybe you're not walking in the ways of God. And here in Abeka chapter number uh, three, we can see here that he's having a conversation. Let's look here. Uh, Isaiah uh, chapter number 33, verse number six, it says, he will be the stability of your times, a wealth of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. God, in, in times of trouble, God is the one who stabilizes things for us. And it looks like all hell is broken loose in everybody else's life that is around you, but 
It's not broken out in your life. Why? Because you fear the Lord. You are walking and being faithful to God. And he has protected you. He has put a protective hedge around you. Not only you, but he also put a protective hedge around your children. He's going to keep you. He's going to hold you. He's going to make sure that things are working out for you. As Proverbs 14, 26 says, uh, he who fears the Lord has a secure fortress. And for his children, it will be a refuge. So not only are you going to be fortified, but your children are going to be taken care of. Why? Because you are faithful to God. And that's what we must understand about Rebecca. Rebecca was faithful to God, even in the middle of the chaos with the rest of the community, with the rest of the world. Rebecca finds himself being willing to be faithful to God no matter what. And that's what God is looking for, those who are willing to be faithful. Verse number two, Rebecca uh, uh, three, number two said, Lord, I have heard your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. He's, he's saying to God, Lord, I know who you are. He's praising God. He's telling God, I'm in awe. I'm excited about you and what you have done. And that's what we must be willing to do. We must be excited about what God has done. What, what should you be excited about? Those who've not had the virus, you need to be excited about that. Those who had the virus and you're not in a hospital, you need to be excited about that. Those who had the virus and are in the hospital, uh, but you're still breathing on your own, you need to be excited about that. Those who have the virus, those who are in the hospital, and those who have a ventilator, you need to be praising God. Why? Because there are many people in the world that don't have those options. They don't have a hospital to go to. They don't have a doctor to go to. They don't have vitamin C or vitamin D or zinc. They don't have access to any of those things. And we should be excited because of where we are. We're blessed to be born where we're born. And God is saying to us today is that he wants us to be in awe of him, of his deeds, what he has done. The question to me is, do you know what God has done? What God has done in this world, what God has done in your life, what God has done in your children's life or your parents' life, we must be in awe of what the Lord has done. Also, uh, Habakkuk chapter number three, verse number two, the second part is repeat them in our days, in our day and in our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. What he's saying to uh, God is in his prayer, Lord, I need you to bring about the pleasant trees. I need you to bring, bring about the exciting things that you've done. I need you to bring about the parting of the Red Sea. I need you to bring about those things where manna came from heaven. Uh, and uh, I need you to bring about healing that took place all over the community. I need you to bring about those greater things, Lord, that you have. And I'm here to say to you that he can do it, but are we asking him to do it? Rebecca was bold enough to ask him about those things. He was bold enough to ask him about the things that he needed to have done. And what I'm saying to you today is we can say, repeat them in our day. Lord, repeat those blessed things that you've done in our day. Repeat those things where there was one priest that was against 400 priests. And you rain down fire and consume them in the offering. Lord, we ask that you will come and give us the ability to, to beat the Goliath that's are in our lives. And what I'm saying to you, we need to ask God, just like a Becca, ask God, God, I need for you. I saw what you did. I've heard what you've done. I've read what you have done. And what I'm asking you to do, Lord God, is to do it in my time. Do it in our times, 
and do it. And so it may be known to them of this season. And then he says to God, in wrath, please, Lord, remember mercy. And that's what we must be willing to do is not only ask God to, to bring about the greater things, but we have to say, Lord, we have done wrong and we need you to bring about your mercy. And I'm here to say to you, God is listening. He's listening to us. He's waiting on us to, to, to ask him for those things. He's waiting on us to be willing to say, Lord, have mercy on us. He's asking, he, God wants us to be, we, we need to ask God for a revival, for a renewal to take place. Right now, the nation of America needs a renewing. The nation of America needs to be revived. Because if we do not uh, surrender and repent, our nation will suffer the wrath of God. And we, as a, a people of this nation, need to be praying, saying, Lord, have mercy. And we can see here that God will hear our prayer, but he's waiting on us. He's waiting on us. We can see that how could Rebecca appeal to God? Here's how he could. Psalms 30, 78, 38, and 39. That's Psalms 78, 38, and 39. It says, but he, being compassionate, forgave their iniquities and did not destroy them. And often he restrained his anger and did not arouse his wrath, though he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that pass and do not return. God knows who we are, but the question is, are we uh, weak enough are we humble enough? Are we unproud enough to go to him and say, Lord, have mercy on me, have mercy on my children, have mercy on my family, have mercy on my, my church family. Lord, have mercy on my community. Lord, have mercy on my nation. God's just waiting on us. Psalms 103 and 17 says, but the Loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. Right now, you have to fear him now and his righteousness to the children's children. We must be willing to go to God and ask him to have mercy on us if we want him to have compassion. You want him to forgive us for our iniquities and you don't want him to destroy us. We must be willing to go to him, must be willing to go to God if we want him to do those things. In Lamentations chapter number three and verse number 32 in verse number 33, it says, Lamentations 3, 32 and 33 says, for if he causes grief, then he will be, he will have compassion according to his abundant loving kindness. For he does not afflict willingly or grieve the sons of men. He doesn't do this, uh, afflict us willingly. It's because of our sins and the wrath of God responds because there's, there's a systems in the world. And we gotta understand something. If you do wrong, you know, reaping and sowing. You know, we often talk about reaping and sowing uh, from a monetary standpoint, but I want you to think about reaping and sowing from a, uh, a spiritual standpoint. If you sow hate, hate comes back. If you sow love, love comes back. If you sow forgiveness, forgiveness comes back. If you sow unforgiveness, unforgiveness come back. Come back. If you show compassion, if you sow compassion, compassion comes back. And what I'm saying to us is that we must understand that God does not want to punish us. We can see here in Psalm 78, uh, 38 and 39, and he says, often he restrains his anger and did not arouse his wrath. He remembered we were flesh. 
He remembered that. And if we're going to get what God wants us to have, if we're going to be who God wants us to be, we must understand that we must, we must follow God's lead. We must do specifically what he has called us to do, because if we do not, I'm here to say to you, we end up in a situation where we find ourselves not receiving what God has in store for us. Psalms 130 and three and four, that's Psalms 130, three and four. It says, if you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, we could stand. But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. God wants to forgive us. Here's a Becca pleading the case for the people. He's pleading the case for the people. And he said, uh, and verse, uh, God, he's saying, his glory covers the heaven and his praise fills the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise, sunrise, Rays flashed in from his hand where his power was hidden. God had the ability to hurt us, but he chose not to. My question to you is, is that what are you going to do? It's in uncertain times. These are challenging times that we're facing. But the key to us to understand is that we must understand that God wants us to live the abundant life. And yes, here, uh, the Israelites, uh, Israel was going to be judged by the Babylon invasion, the captivity, but that was not the end. God was going to revive them in the midst of those years. And what I'm saying to you is, is that God will revive you. God will lift you up in the middle of what you have, what you're facing but you must be willing to trust God because God wants to help us. God wants us to be uh, what he wants us to be. He wants us to be within his will. But the key thing is that when we find ourselves in the middle of chaos, we gotta live by faith in the middle of this chaos and God will help us through. And we can see here that God is powerful. His splendor would like the sunrise, uh, rays flashing from his hand where his power was hidden. Plagues went before him. Pestilence followed his steps. I'm here to say to you, you'll win. You'll be successful. You'll make it. But the key thing is that you must be willing to find specifically that God has the ability to help you through what you find yourself dealing with. But you must be willing to, uh, to follow the Lord. You must be willing to uh, allow him to move in your life. God will reveal his power to those who are faithful. Remember Job? Job went through so much, but Job remained faithful. And that's what I'm saying to you. In the middle of chaos, in the middle of uncertainty, in the middle of not knowing specifically what, where, how you're going to make it uh, through it, I want you to understand that God is powerful. God's power may be hidden right now from you, but I'm here to say to you that he is going to help you. But you must be willing to understand that in his splendor, the sun rises. And you can see God's hand moving in the earth, even today, even in the middle of the chaos, in the middle of confusion, in the middle of the challenges, God's hand is still moving. In the middle of the uncertainty, God's, stand is, is, God's hand is moving. And here we can see in the book of Rebecca, I'm here to say to you, does it not remind you of today? Well, there's chaos, there's confusion, there's uncertainty, there's a lack of leadership. But God is saying to you, I need you to understand that I am in charge. 
And this is what Rebecca was saying in this prayer. Your splendor covers the heaven and your praise fills the earth. And he's saying to him that guess what? Lord, repeat them in our day. Repeat, Lord God, your blessing. Repeat, repeat Lord God, your, uh, your power today. Let us see the supernatural move of God. Let us see the revival taking place today. And I'm here to say to you that it can happen. It can happen to you. But the key thing is, is that are you prepared to experience what God has in store for all of us? We must be willing to follow God and we must be willing to move forward with what he has called us to do because God has the ability to help us in every situation and circumstance must understand that even though it's uncertain, even though it's challenging, even though it's difficult, we must understand that God is the one who's making it work for us. And I want you to trust God. And I want you to understand that here in the back of chapter number three, uh, verse number one, uh, through verse number four, you can see here, Rebecca, the prophet, is going to God in a mode of praise. My question to you is, how are you going to God in prayer? Are you going to him in a mode of praise, a mode of thanksgiving? And I'm here to say, if you're going to God in a mode of praise, and a mode of thanksgiving, God has the ability to help you through whatever situation that you find yourself in. But you must be willing to trust God. You must be willing to believe that God has the ability to help you through where you are. God wants to bless you. God wants you to move past where you are. But the key thing is you must be willing to trust God. And if you trust God, it's going to work out in your good, for your good and in your favor. But you have to be within his will. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, to realize that God has the ability to help us in every situation, every circumstance. I want to invite you to come back to the Bible study tonight at 7 I uh, look forward to uh, being with you, and I want you to understand that uh, God is who he says he is. God is who he says he is. He's going to help us, and I need you to understand that God knows your name. God is going to help you, and God is not forgotten about you. I love you. I look forward to you being back with me later on. Father, bless them. Keep them. Let your favor follow them. Lord God, let your love overtake them. And we ask for your grace and your mercy. And we ask also, Lord God, that you order your steps, order their steps, Lord God, that they may follow your path and your direction. We praise you. We uplift you. We magnify you. We glorify you. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we pray. Amen.